Hello everyone and welcome to Yoga with Laura Ashland. This is a special session today, a very unique session. It is called Viparita Karni and that means legs up the wall. So what I'd like you to do is clear a little space. You only need about four feet or so of empty wall and your mat can be on carpet, floor, towels, whatever you need, extra cushion if you feel you're going to be a while on your back. So make sure you're super comfortable. Something for the head and neck to keep it uh, in line with the spine. And this session will be about 20 to 30 minutes of some wall work. 90 degrees helps our spine and legs be also at the 90 degree angle so we have a little bit of resistance. Some of these postures will be held one to three minutes per side so there won't be too much talking in between. You'll just follow along with me. This is just to add to your toolbox of all the other sessions that we uh, share together. And I wanna thank you for subscribing. My little subscriber base is growing and viewing and liking, but especially subscribing. So just hit that subscription button and follow along with me. Clear a little bit of space. You don't have to move any pictures as you notice my fan is here and I've got quite long leg and yet it won't even reach the base of that fan so you don't have to move anything off your wall but you might have to move a little bit at the floor. Let's begin. Finding a comfortable spot making sure that you have all the padding you need because if you're lying here for 25 minutes or so you want to make sure that you have support. So how do we get up on this wall? Most people ask, and most seniors are wondering, uh, again, how to get the body safely up the wall. However, even young people, 20 to 50, there could still be some issues uh, there for them. So to begin with, we're gonna put our hip into the wall first, and then come down onto the elbow. Make sure this feels good, then, all the way to the spine. Now scooping my knees up so I have a little bit of a tucked posture here and then straighten the legs any amount. They may be here or here or here or straight or whatever works. Then I'm going to turn and dig my heels into that wall, use my elbows, my shoulders and skull to scoot around just a little bit. Remember we talked earlier about back of the skull bone, shoulder plates, shoulder heads, elbows, heel, hip too. All are your back body bones with which to move around. So as I'm getting just a little bit more adjusted to become in the center of the mat or your blanket, we're going to press the heels into the mat and pick up the hips and then shift the hips down against where the baseboard and the floor meet. If it is too much for you to be in this 90 degree angle due to extension of the hamstrings, then scoot down the mat, I'd say about four or five inches, and have more of a diagonal line to the wall. So there's gonna be space between the bottom of the body and the wall itself. Adjust how you need to to feel very comfortable. This is Viparita Karani, or Legs Up the Wall Pose. This is one of man's first exercises besides running. They would run down their food for the night. But as far as an exercise went, this is one of the most ancient poses for human beings. And we're just allowing the blood flow to come down the legs, it begins to pool into the hips, and then you'll feel a wonderful flushing of the blood toward the lung, toward the heart, toward the head. So we're feeding the brain a little bit of this blood flow, and getting it out of the smaller containers of our feet. If you feel this is too much pressure in the face, those of you with high blood pressure, be very careful. You might want to elevate your face up a little bit, therefore a block 
or a thick book from home. Remember we talked about using a book, a thick dictionary, some kind of a book. Even a rolled up towel, a bolster, and all of this kind of adjusting to be comfortable. This is all up to you. You've got lots of things around your house that you can uh, certainly bring up the head and the upper shoulders if that's too much pressure on the back. Here with the feet straight uh, up in the air, we can play with the feet a little bit. I might choose to flex and point. I might work through the big toe coming toward my forehead. Remember the same fascial tissue around your big toe, it is connected to the fascial tissue around the brain, right in the center. So this is a de-stressor here to work getting those toes toward the wall and just allowing your big toe to be closer to the face. And just move freely, move naturally with your feet, whatever is required. Again, each posture will be one to three minutes. I'm averaging around two minutes per side. There won't be too many postures uh, to remember or to have to follow. It's mostly taking our time, dropping into the breath, Now choices here, while that blood flow is working with gravity and continuing to pull toward the hips and then toward the vitals, this is optional work here. You can certainly bring your arms over your head. If that's too much impingement for the shoulders, you could open the arms a little bit. Still with my uh, back of the hand on the mat, I'm not turning the palms down. So just the back of the hand. If all that's too much to reach, I don't, it doesn't matter if you're 20 or 80, this is a big reach for people. Great opening for the ribcage and the intercostals. But if you wanted to, you can come out a little bit. You might fold at the elbow or straighten at the elbow. You might also decide to come to shoulder height. Palms up or down here really isn't uh, set in stone either way. So what is comfortable for you? Would you like that external rotation of the shoulders while the uh, palms are facing toward the sky? Or do you want internal rotation of the shoulder while the palms are down to the floor? Now our first movement for legs up the wall Maybe this is enough for you. Maybe five, 10 minutes of this is plenty. This is an excellent, excellent posture. But if we are getting ready to move and choose to do so, we're gonna take the right leg and we're gonna to begin to slide it down the wall. Now it can be anywhere from zero degrees to where the floor and wall meet at the 90 degree. Whatever works for you, there would be about the 45 degree here. If the knees and legs are not happy being straight, please just slide the heel in and bend the knee. You could relax the foot, or you could keep the foot active in flexion and be right here. Maybe some of you are only this open. This is fine. This is a nice adductor stretch, so I invite you to go anywhere along here that feels comfortable for you to stretch open the muscles that run along the inside of the thigh. Now you can notice that as this leg begins to come down, this leg's gonna get a little higher. I can feel my foot touching the base of that fan. Once this limb got out of the way, this leg went up because space was created. Any of these are perfectly fine. Another minute. I'm gonna scoop my leg around that fan. You certainly can stay more parallel. 
I think if I go any lower here, my foot would hit that. So be careful of your own uh, wall coverings. And that little bit of degree out there is not a problem. So any of these are fine. 90 degree, 80, 70, 60, to the 45 center, and on up closer to the zero. The feet are relatively active here. Sometimes people get cramps in their feet because you're keeping it in this uh, kind of tension of the flexion of the foot. So anytime you feel you need to just release it, wiggle them around a little bit and release any uh, tension that has been built from the contracted muscles. You have 31 muscles in your feet. And at any time, any one of them could contract. So to come back up, you can come up in stages. Certainly you can bend the knee and walk up. Or those of you that wish, a little bit of core work, swoop up one leg. Nice. And then you're just kind of pressing the heel in, picking up the hip just a little bit. I want to go easy with you at the beginning of legs up the wall so you don't think that it becomes the acrobat, uh, any discouragement. These are wonderful uh, postures and I would love to start you nice and slow so that you'll also feel the benefit. Now we'll take the other side. I'm just going to tip my leg off to the side a little bit and again here or here or here. over here, any amount. Now I'm allowing my hip to shift a little bit to open, and it may be here for a moment while this leg is also gonna go off to the side just a little bit. And as I get lower, and again, keeping the feet free to move, that's again, that's an option if the blood flow becomes an issue or a little cramping starts. In about another minute here. There is contraction on the right side of the hip muscles here, and there is an extension of the horizontal hip muscles here. Those are the ones that go from the hip plate, from the bone to the spine. A Little bit of a stretch for the psoas also. The psoas muscle comes from about thir two, a third of the way up the spine, right? It attaches the spine and it comes down into the uh, pelvic bowl. And that's the psoas, the iliopsoas. And that's the muscle that keeps our two bones together, the superior set of bones and the inferior set of bones are attached by this psoas muscle. Unseen, undiscussed, very important muscle in the body. Also a great adductor stretch here. little bit of one here, but mostly now this is coming from the hamstrings. Here we go. When you're ready on a nice inhale, you can come up in stages with a bent leg and all of this could have been bent. This is perfectly fine. So you'll play along that 90 degrees and find out what works for you. As both hips line up, you can see the sinking and now my heels don't reach the base of that fan. There was a tiny bit of lift once that leg got out of the way. Now, if you wish, we'll go ahead and try both legs. And here is the beginning choices. You can bend the knees, come out here. We're going to do a little bit more of this one in a moment. This may be it. This may be it. Or you've decided from where my knees are, line up the ankle, heel with my knee, and extend. This is it. Mm -hmm. 
option. Legs are still open in this uh, wide angle, but the knees are still bent. And for this next minute, as you begin to adjust, opening a little bit more. Now, as I'm opening, there's a little bit of anterior tilt of the pelvic bowl. You don't want too much so that you don't have that arch in the low back. So we're still pressing the low back as much as possible in and try to maintain a neutral pelvic bowl. We don't want that tipping too far to the wall. Again, arms while you're hanging out and enjoying this wonderful stretch against this wall that will not give. People do this in the air, but air tends to give, right? So this wall keeps us uh, very disciplined within a geometric shape. Arms can be high as shoulder, T-shape, straight up above, but watch that the rib cage don't doesn't flare. If the rib cage flares up, you want to drop it down a little bit. That will also keep your pelvic bowl more anterior. You could also go ahead and bend the elbows if this is comfortable for you. And when none of that is working and you don't want to mess with the arms at all, you can certainly bring them right to your lap and place them at the belly maybe even at heart space, to connect to the breathing. As my body begins to adjust to this, it might go another inch or two, but that's a limit for me. I know many people who can get their legs down here to the floor, and other people that just have a very narrow V. We are all different, and we all do what works for us. Now to come out of this posture, if your hands were uh, flying around the mat here, that's fine, but uh, you're going to bring them back in, take your hands behind the knees, and I'm gonna bend my legs in a little bit so that I don't have that strain, so to speak, here and then all of a sudden bring my legs together so that they were out stretching very vulnerable muscles here and then all of a sudden they have to become weight lifters to press you together so i'd much rather use my hands to help my legs come together with the bent knee it retracted some of that uh, elongation of the muscle cells so we'll come together here and a really yummy feeling is dropping the feet and bringing the knees toward the belly, anywhere that feels comfortable here, maybe you're here, or here, or here, or here. All these choices. You might uh, experiment a little bit here with pressing the feet into the wall you get a little bit more length from spine if, as energy is pushing toward the wall, right? Physics, the opposite energy is going to be uh, going away from the wall, which becomes the skull and the spine. And you can also feel this nice stability in the hips here. This is an option, or you can be very loose against the wall, or even take the feet off the wall and hold here. When you're ready, we're going to go ahead and take that left leg up to the wall, and I'm going to drop out my right limb. Holding my foot and ankle as I bring that foot into the wall, and I'm going to press the left, excuse me, the right limb into the wall with my right hand. This is fairly stable. This can continue to drop in a little bit. It can even tuck in behind. No problem there. But this hand is pressing as much as possible. You could hold a couple of breaths. Release. Exhale. Press toward the stretch. Take an inhale for releasing. 
exhale, press into the stretch. This is optional for you too. You might just want to hold it there or use the hand. Don't press on the kneecap or any of the area of the knee joint. I'm going into the meat of my leg, either my long bone or the meat that runs here. So that's safe to press there. And this is very much like uh, one of the postures that we do out on our mats. If I was sitting up and my spine was in the air and I had my leg out, we would be getting ready for Janu Shirshasana, which is the head to knee posture. I'm just flipping your body. So because we're at approximately a two minute each posture, each side, and again, it's all up to you. If this is sensitive, take care, go short. Maybe you want to challenge it, stay a little longer. That's the beauty of YouTube and being at home in your own environment. You can stop and start anytime you want to. You can stop me and start me again anytime you want to. So for the second half of this side, what we're going to do, this is external rotation of my hip. We're going to take the foot out and let it slide along the wall, turn the knee in, and then drop the foot down. Now the foot can be here along the baseboard. It can be closer in. Foot can be up higher. Where does it work for you? Many folks are out here and they're working getting that knee. This is internal rotation of the hip socket, ball and socket. My DNA given to me by my parents and grandparents and great grands is that the internal rotation of my hip has a great range. So I can take it all the way around. This is very comfortable. I actually don't even feel anything here. However, after so many years of yoga, I don't necessarily have this rotation, external rotation, in my hip. It still flies off the wall a little bit. I have to use that hand for the pressing as I'm breathing. So this for me, for my body, takes more effort to, it needs more stability to create that external rotation of the hip. Whereas this, is not very challenging for me. So how does it feel for you? You can kind of test your own hip, ball and socket, and see uh, where you're at. Sometimes people don't even know these things until they are doing yoga, whether it's on the mat or on the wall. Now we're gonna stay on the same side, same leg, I'm going to take my foot and move the foot, which moved the knee. Now here we are looking like we're about to do a Marici twist, which we will. I'm going to pick up my foot and place it on the other side of the knee. Maybe I went on the low ankle and slid the foot down the wall. Taking my left arm way up and over my head or out to the side for it, you know, to stay away from the impingement. And then I'm gonna cross my left arm over and inside my right thigh. Right arm goes toward the right, of course, palm down. I'm going to look right now to my right fingers and then press more this left thigh over to the right to get a nice stretch here in the IT. The other thing that's happening is my left leg, the pole, is turning to the right. So there's a lot of uh, opposite uh, going on here, a lot of dynamic tension going on here as I press this to the left, but my left leg is rolling to the right. I don't want it to give an all turn to the left. I want to keep that leg straight. And that working a lot of the hip muscles too. It's interesting to think that legs up the wall are hip openers. As the body adjusts, 
and you want to deepen it a little bit more, press the back of that left arm into the outside of that right thigh. And as always, when you're rotating the cervical spine, be very gentle, very careful here. Once you've established this, you might decide to roll a little bit more. But again, you are the internal thermometer of all these workings. Where do you need to back off? Where do you need to do more? Now, to come out of this posture, the first thing that moves is the head. I'm going to pick up my skull and I'm going to rotate it in the air. That's a lot better than rotating it and rubbing it with friction against the rubber or the carpet. And then place the skull down. My arm comes up over and my leg returns to the right side. So how we got in, we opposite it stages to get out. So I may slide my leg here, take it up over the low part of my leg, the little uh, narrow bone there versus a thicker bone here, and decide to come back. Or maybe at this point, I've decided to stay straight. And the other side. This leg, our left leg now, and again, if you did the left and I'm doing the right, then you know your opposites. You can track what side you came to. We're going to go ahead and take the right leg out. I'm going to bring my foot in to the uh, base of the body, into the perineum area, and settle that foot in first. And inhale, prepare. Exhale, press. Inhale, release it. Exhale, press. Inhale, release it. Just a little bit. Remember, I'm on the flesh of the inside of that left leg. No joints. And release it. If you're happy, stay here. If you did one, you just did one. Right? Now I'm going to go get my leg, move my foot. The foot moving out is what brought my knee in. So it's not the knee controlling these changes. Now I'm going to lower my foot down, and there goes the knee pressing in. You may decide to be here along the floor. We're going and getting the limb and bringing it in a little bit closer. So that the plate of the foot is against the uh, wall. If that's too much, uh, I know in the past uh, for my clients, I've put a little washcloth or some kind of a small piece of material between their foot and the wall so that it didn't feel like the bony part of their foot was pressing into something hard. We do not have to have the knees together. They can be knee any of this arc here. Stay as long as you like or as short as you wish. I'm going to take my foot and slide it away and bring that knee out. Slide the knee right across the floor. 
uh, my new floor, the wall, this becomes space, this becomes the new floor. Adjust if you need to, and dropping that foot in, maybe this is as far as you need to go. If not, the next stage is to cross the foot over, coming from here and sliding down, or just crossing over. Inhaling as that right arm comes up, I'm trying to get as much length in my right side as possible. That includes the obliques, the intercoastal muscles, the sides of the uh, pectoralis, the, the larger muscles here. So they're small, medium, and large as well. So all of this is stretching, right? including the tricep. So this nice length allowed me on the exhale to cross over. I am bringing my right arm inside the back side of my left thigh. And as I'm giving it pressure to lengthen the IT here, a little bit of hamstring movement, not too much, I think we're getting more hamstring here, but definitely the IT. But don't let that right foot go over width. It wants to go width. Something's going on over here and it doesn't want to be left out. So everything is coming to the right. What I'd like you to uh, be aware of and remember to do is take that right leg and its energy is going to the left. That's the mix down at the base of the body. Picking up the skull, turning to the left, allowing the cervical spine to adjust. If this is too much straight on the floor, you've got these nice props. As you're ready, picking up the skull just a little bit, inhaling, rolling the skull back to neutral, exhale, placing the skull down. Nice and safe, always safety in the neck first. My right arm is gonna go up and over. I may decide to slide it back to the T or stay up or fold. And then here comes that left leg up and over the height of the kneecap or up and over the height of the ankle. And I can decide to extend it, which seems to be the most natural uh, thing next, is to extend all this area that's in flexion. The knee's been in flexion, the hip's been in flexion. Hip is still in flexion, but at least to neutralize the knee. Now our last two will just be, uh, one is kind of a restretch, but the uh, one will be in for about uh, two minutes. It takes time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide our feet down the center of the wall. I happen to have an outlet here, so be very careful. That should probably have a little plug in it. Uh, it is still an active <laughs> outlet, so we wanna be careful, but that's the way this uh, wall is offering. So what we want to do is we want to come here to bringing in bound angle. Now I'm not able to put my feet together, but maybe you are. Remember the ball presses in, we flower the toes out, the heels press together, and that's the stability. So we're going to go ahead and open up. And again, pressing on the uh, thick flesh or the meat of the inside of the leg and in the long bone and kind of working both legs out. And here is a really great example of how our bones fit. A lot of the um, trochanter, the top of the leg bone, has this bump, this trochanter. That's the socket and it goes into the acetabulum, which is the uh, socket in the hip. 
These are done so many different ways. It can come straight in. It can come at an angle. And I've even seen the leg bone come up. The trochanter turns into the acetabulum and you get this crazy almost arc here, right? So it's not always straight in. Sometimes it's not a 90 degree angle, but it comes in at much more of an angle. You could have a large uh, femoral head bone in a very small socket, so you're not, it's not gonna get a lot of movement. You could have a very small head, the trochanter at the top of the leg bone, in a very wide acetabulum, so it's going to have all kinds of movement in there. Now, unless you have an x-ray from your medical doctor, would you know exactly the shape of your femoral head versus your socket? But I think it's really valuable information to have. This, over almost 20 years of yoga, I cannot open my legs to the wall, or even when I'm sitting, they're hovering in the air. I feel bone on bone back here. It's not that my uh, adductors are not stretching. Even the IT and the muscles here in the thigh are not stretching. It's that the bone is stopped or stuck and that's as far as that's going to go. So never force, never press too hard because you have some goal in mind to get this leg to that wall. That's not the idea. Know where your body says stop. And be very happy to stop right there. That's the natural practice. That's the true practice. Not that you have some look. So here is challenging for me. I don't need my adductors anymore open. And I'm going on bone. The next one is to take your hands outside the knee or the side of the leg, and if you wish, wish, see if you can get both legs turned in. Now again, this is comfortable for me because of this internal rotation. This may not be comfortable for you, whereas the external rotation was, the bound angle was. This really, if you turned me and you flipped me to the mat, and my head was up and my spine was up into the air, this would be hero's pose or Vajrasana, the kneeling posture. I'd have my feet maybe a little bit more underneath my thighs, but this is uh, more comfortable for my body type than going out. 30 seconds or so. If this is too much, uh, you can certainly stay in the bound angle and hang out there because you know it's not going to happen to turn in. Or maybe just one leg. The other leg is up or out of the way while you're turning in this leg. So this is just a double version of what we did. To come out of this, I'm going to bring my knee off the wall, but I'm going to move my feet. Good. My knee does have to come off the wall a little bit. That's what uh, releases the foot. The foot and back. Very nice. Now here, before we uh, complete, the hips have been down a long time. You're lying on the backs of your lungs. Maybe you feel it's time to get off your spine and off the back of the lung. Certainly have good cushions here uh, for this practice. Maybe you've decided to put a cushion under the head. Bring that head up for the blood pressure issues. All of these are good as I'm going to go ahead and part my feet about hip width, my hip width apart. And then I'm going to press the heels into the wall. So I'm not going to use my full ball. My toes are only for balance, right? So I'm not going to use the ball and the, and the heel. I'm just going to use the heel. And then pressing, coming up the wall, any amount, and see where that works for you. Taking your hands behind the back. The more I press into that wall, the more my pelvic points will come forward. 
you may decide to stop right here. And this is just getting up off the back, getting my hips out of flexion and getting them into a little bit more of an extension here rather than here. If you wish, maybe one leg can come off the wall. Press that right foot in. Lower back down. Press the left foot into the wall. Hips come forward. It's not about the leg coming forward. It's about the hips. There's the sunken hip. There's the hip coming forward. That's all has to do with my foot pressing in to the wall. That's the stability. Maybe both. Uh oh, whoa. Maybe both if you wish. For a little bit of shoulder stand. Again, this is an option. Back down very carefully. Back down. When ready, roll from the shoulders. Roll from the thoracic spine. Easy. Just like you would roll one vertebrae at a time to begin Shavasana. Now you can certainly do Shavasana right here. The practice is finished. You're nice and quiet. Another option is to fold the knees, come off to the side. Bring my arm above my head as if we're getting ready for fetal posture, fetal position at the end. I'm rolling. This is a nice safe way of how to get back up once we've been down. I'm still going to extend that top leg, press with that left hand, come into the wall. I may decide to end right here, or I may come straight in. Legs straight in front of me and my back against the wall. Finish the practice here. Or you certainly can bring the legs in, a little bit more bound angle. I go get my feet and bring them in. Okay. Laying in that L shape, spine on the mat, legs up. Coming to the reverse L shape, legs on the mat, spine up. Or simply just this nice bound angle. It feels really good to get that spine long onto the uh, wall here. Relax your shoulders and your face muscles. Namaste.